I'm here today at the Chicago Auto Show, where, like many auto shows, more and more electric vehicles keep showing up, being debuted, or being highlighted as the vehicle of the future. But for a lot of folks, this is going to be their first electric car, which means chances are when they take it from the dealership to the house, they don't have a place to plug it in when they get there. Now what I've seen and will highlight for you today is not just some of the charging solutions that these vehicle manufacturers are putting forward, but also some of the programs and educational material that they're starting to put out to make sure that when you buy one of their vehicles, you're fully satisfied with your electric vehicle ownership experience. Over here at the Chevrolet booth, we see some of the GM EVSE equipment made available, but also some of the educational material that they're putting out, at least here at the auto show. Now, understanding the equipment, the numbers, the product that you've just purchased is very important to having a positive experience. And this, I think, is critical to making sure that people get the most out of their electric vehicle. You can see down here, they have the different descriptions. So a vehicle to vehicle adapter, the power bar and power bar plus, which is essentially your offload power, and then the power cord adapter bundle, depending on what sort of plug you might already have in your home at the garage, so that you could take your cable and adjust the plug to make sure that it fits your needs. That is if you decide not to go with something here like the Level 2 EVSC that is Ultium branded, not just the batteries, but also the infrastructure with this Ultium labeling. Now this one right here is designed to plug directly into an outlet itself instead of being hardwired, at least in the demonstration model we have here. And for me, this is not the best way to go if you plan on having this in that spot on a regular basis. If for some reason you have a justification for moving to and from different locations, it seems to make sense that you would want something that would go with you. But for me, this is just another fail point because you're running a very similar cable from your power box out to this outlet. You will then plug this into the outlet, which is its own separate unit. And it feels not only like an extra step, but like an extra spot for things to go wrong. I will say that hopefully this model is available in a hardwire only as well. I do, I do suspect that it is, but it is worth considering and knowing that having this plug may not be as easy as it sounds. Not only does GM have EVSE equipment ranging from level one to level two, but GM has their own energy division now, which is gonna offer things like home battery backup and the ability to plug your vehicle in to your home's power system commonly referred to as vehicle to home, vehicle to load, or vehicle to grid, depending on that specific situation, you can see that the kit involved here is going to make it so you could take something like your Silverado EV, plug it directly into the home, and whether you have a power outage going to the home, or if you have solar panels and that truck is parked during the day, you can charge it essentially directly from that solar power. Now, these installations are certainly versatile, but it's not gonna be something that everyone needs or wants, and it may be added cost that really isn't worth it. So if you are curious about a vehicle battery home backup system, take a deep look and see what's involved, understanding that the equipment is not a single plug and play solution. There is gonna be some inverters. And again, the battery backup capacity is probably gonna be a significant portion of that, but you can, in theory, walk into a Chevrolet dealer, purchase your Silverado EV, get your EVSE, maybe even included in the financing, and also have access to some of this GM energy equipment. The only concern I have down the road is how interchangeable this equipment will be with the different models. As you can see here, this specific plug is a CCS connector. And that is what's currently on the Chevy Silverado and all the other Ultium EVs. But in the not too distant future, this plug is going to be changing to the new J3400 standard. So if this is what you have installed right now and you purchase it today, it is not going to be too far down the road where you're probably looking at changing out just that connector at least, and hopefully the backward compatibility is built into the system. Right here towards the back of the Volkswagen booth, right in front of this Volkswagen ID4, we see the Volkswagen offering, too many Volkswagens I know, but the name changes when you switch over to the charging side of things. You see Electrify Home is part of Electrify America, and for those who don't know, it's Volkswagen who's in charge of Electrify America. Now it makes sense when you buy a Volkswagen that you do get credits towards DC fast charging on the Electrify America network, but it is nice to know if you wanna stay 
in network, in company, however you want to put it, you can also get an Electrify Home Level 2 charging station. This unit here clearly states some of the benefits that you find not just on this one, but on most EVSEs that you do hardwire or plug into the wall. You can do things like change some of the charging speed, track how much usage you've had, and some of these casings are going to either fit or contradict your preferred styling. So it's nice to know there are options, some of them being manufacturer specific, but if you don't like the way this might look in your garage, there are still other ways you can go. After navigating my way through the forest that is the Subaru booth, I found this open clearing that contains not only a Subaru Solterra, but also a absolutely necessary charging station to make sure that once we've arrived at our location, we can get home from it. This level two EVSE is going to be capable of providing anywhere from about 20 to 30 miles of charge per hour to those who are plugged into it. And if you are on the trailhead, if you are at the campsite and you do have the Subaru that gets you there, then it makes sense to see more of these out and about. But the design here is just a little bit different. And it's only worth mentioning because an EVSE or a charging station does not need to be some big, enormous structure. It doesn't have to look like it came out of the future. And this one here is a pretty simple box. I like the fact that it's just sort of a minty, blended green. And this cable is gonna be long enough to get to your vehicle, depending on where your charger is actually located at, and get you home from that journey. This may not be exactly what you put in your house, unless your garage or outdoor aesthetic is something like this. But all these partnerships are designed to make electric vehicle ownership just that much easier. And if you like your brands to match and your Subaru label wants to match the Subaru charger, then by all means, the key component is just making sure that this is the right plug. So far, it's been more common than not for a vehicle manufacturer to partner with a charging equipment manufacturer in putting together a solution for your new electric vehicle. And here we have a great example of that but leaning more towards the electric vehicle charging manufacturer because this is a ChargePoint branded charger. It is going to be a level two EVSE and it's not gonna say Kia on it anywhere. It's not to say that there won't be some down the road, but ChargePoint is just one of many manufacturers who makes the equipment to charge the vehicle without making the vehicle themselves. Now this particular unit is a lot smaller on the wall, but one thing I noticed right away is that it has an external plug which again is not going to be ideal for most. And if you do find yourself needing a versatile solution, then I might skip the wall mounted one entirely and go with one that is more of a cord based system than this fully installed unit. Here at the Honda booth and next door over at the Acura booth, we see two very similarly shaped and designed EVSCs. These are going to be level two, but you'll notice there is a little bit of a difference in the look. This one's going for a little bit on the cleaner white side, the Acura model going for an all black, sort of a more modern, maybe luxury look, depends on what you think about an all black aesthetic. Either way, Honda's approach is a little bit different. They will not just have an option for you for the charging, but the purchase of the vehicle comes with charging credits and you get to decide what that system looks like. So right behind me, you can see the Prolog. When you purchase a Prolog, you are also going to receive credits that can be divvied up between level three DC fast charge credits or lean more heavily towards a rebate for getting one of these units installed in your home. Now it really depends on what your use case is on which one might make more sense for you. But I think most people are looking at their first electric car, at least statistically that's the case. And if that's you, you probably don't have one of these at home already. If I was purchasing the Honda Prologue, I would lean towards having credits towards getting this installed in the home and not worry too much about that DC fast charging because it's not something you're gonna do on it nearly as regular of a basis. And you are gonna want one of these installed at the house. Now over here at Ford, where they wanna go electric together, they've put forward a great display to tell you not only just the products that are offered, but a better understanding of what they do and how they might best serve you. The first stop here is the Ford Mobile Power Cord, which is up to 32 amps. This is a dual voltage charger, meaning that you can plug it into a 120 volt, swap the plug and plug it into a 240 volt. And if you find yourself, maybe it's a rental situation, maybe you do not have something installed at the moment, or you do take road trips to a place where someone has a 240 volt installed, this might be something to consider either as your daily backup that's kept in the vehicle and then used on trips or in a pinch, like something like a rental situation, it might be a great fit for your everyday charging needs. 
but I do tend to prefer something like this, which is a wired in solution for your level two charging needs because we are getting rid of that one more piece and that one more fail point. Now this specific unit is charging up to 48 amps, meaning that you plug it into a 60 amp breaker. This currently comes with the J1772, which is going to be a common theme, though Ford has said that in the short term, they are gonna be putting out the adapters for the J3400. And like most manufacturers, as we get into 2025, they will have converted most, if not all of their charging plugs to that J3400 standard. Again, as I mentioned, if you are about to purchase one of these, it's worth considering that that change may be coming. I'm not saying don't purchase the car right now because if you buy it today, you are likely gonna own it for a few years. So it is not a tomorrow problem, but it is something to consider. If you move down the line, we see another large unit, this one saying Ford across the front and having the CCS plug. But the reason this has that CCS connector is not because this is a at-home DC fast charging or level three charger. It's because that this one is intended to be used for your faster charging of vehicles like the large F-150, excuse me, F-150 Lightning, but also to be used as part of the battery home backup system. That CCS plug is gonna be able to pull a significantly higher amount of energy from that battery pack, and that's what's going to be used to either charge up some batteries that you may have at home, or plug directly into the house's electrical system and be able to keep your lights on when the rest of the neighborhood loses power. Again, this unit is not going to be a at-home DC fast charge or level three system, but it is gonna be imperative if you wanna get the most out of the backup capability in a vehicle like the F-150 Lightning. I'm just worried about this CCS connector as we switch to that JD3400. As more and more people swap their internal combustion for electric propulsion, it's important to make sure that not only do they have the equipment that they need, but an understanding of that product and its capabilities. As we see here at the Chicago Shell, there are so many examples just from the auto manufacturers and their accompanying partnerships that there are plenty of solutions for everyone, whether that means charging speed, whether that is mobility to and from different locations, or perhaps just the backup that stays in the car, all the way to making sure there's an aesthetic that matches what your garage or your new vehicle or whatever that vibe is that you're looking for. It's great to see more options coming forward, to see them highlighted here at the show alongside the electric vehicles. And as North America transitions away from the J1772 and the CCS connector moving towards the J3400, it'll be interesting to see what solutions people put forward in terms of adapters, but also how easy it might be to take the Honda charging station that you purchased here and swap in that new connector. Of all the equipment we took a look at here today, let me know down in the comment section below which one you would take home and have installed in the garage or outside the shop, whether that be for charging power, whether that be for the aesthetic, or whether it has to do with the ability to connect to your home and maybe your solar systems and a backup battery unit. If you have any other thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, again, please leave those down in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.